Hello, welcome to the show, Shadowcast. We host Thomas Anderson and Abigail Moit. I am still here. Well, it's different to welcome back. Yeah, you have to be the energy. You have to zip in and go. Oh, I'm here. Woo! I have just come. I have just had a massive dinner and dessert. I am food sleepy. Doesn't matter. It's work time. It is work. This time. is sleep sleep time. No, it isn't. It's still daylight. It's summer. It's daylight to like nine o'clock at the moment. Are you going to sleep before nine? No. Good. So sometimes how... depends on how t how active I've been during the day. Pity. It's pity time. I once Let's actually fell. Pity. I once fell asleep at eight o'clock at night, and I regretted it because I woke up at like four a.m. and I couldn't get back to sleep. I once fell asleep at eight at night, and I regretted it because I was asleep. No. What have you been playing? I finished shitty part of me and i think we discussed last week i was gonna give or i thought i was about 10 minutes away from the end and it turns out i was mm -hmm. so if i just kept playing i would have been able to give the verdict last week last week i was happy to give this game about an 8 out of 10 i have now decided to drastically bring that down to about a 5 out of 10 okay so what happened in the last 10 minutes the ending the ending happened at the end. I can see why that would... Yes, I can see that. But why did the ending happening at the end upset you? Because of how it ended, I was very upset. Because we discussed last week the kind of endings I hate. So we discussed the fact that I hate ambiguous endings? It yes. was an ambiguous ending. So you wanted a bit more... Of I a... wanted a confirmation. There was no confirmation. It was literally just... No idea what happened. No, no real clue as to what the resolution was, if there was one anyway. Art, the, the, the things going for this up until a certain point was story. The story was interesting. It, it was intriguing to know what was actually happening, who the little girl was, who the shadow was, because there was like a lot of heavily suggestible things in the story. However, there was no real resolution. You didn't really understand what was going on. I looked it up to see if there was actually like a definite answer. Maybe I wasn't getting it. And it turned out no, hardly anybody else has gotten it. A lot of other people have also said the same thing, that they really hated the ending. It was great up until the last 15 minutes of gameplay, basically. A lot of people really liked. And I do agree. Did you think that was the major problem with the end, just how they wrote it? what they wrote for an ending or do you think there was gameplay issues or anything like I that? I feel like I think last time I spoke about this they introduced the new power of being able to possess little robot people. Okay. I didn't fully understand the the reasoning behind that. I kind of understood the I did understand the elevation of her powers in regards to shadow play like sh being able to work with the shadows that are around yes i understand that that's a good escalation of power progression but with being able to possess a little robot creature i didn't understand that but uh -huh. i isn't it was necessary necessary to actually finish the game the art style again I, the things that are like i said the things that were going for it were the story up until a certain point but definitely the art style is the art style and the invention of the actual gameplay are probably the things that are dri the driving force behind it. More so the art style than anything else. And how the, the two characters interact with each other. I think that's probably the thing that's going to drive anybody's interest within the game. I think most people who like a resolution at the end of the game are going to be seriously disappointed at this. So I would really only ever buy this game if it was on sale. I wouldn't pay full price for it. Okay, um, quick question. Um, why was it 8 out of 10? I know now why it dropped from 8 to 5, but why was it originally 8? Uh, art st because I thought the story was going somewhere. Yeah, why wasn't it 10? Because there were little niggles, niggledy, niggledy, niggly bits which still annoyed me. Um, the whole having to kind of like backtrack with different characters and things like this. Because we spoke about the fact that... Oh, you you were basically... It wasn't like an alternate path. You were just totally backtracking and repeating yeah. at points. And that just annoyed you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So that was the reason why it was originally 8 out of 10. Okay. And like I said, nobody else could really give a definite answer. 
So it what? doesn't look like they, yeah, okay. They left it ambiguous, yeah. but that doesn't really suit the rest of the concept of the game. It needs an answer at the yeah. end. So after I did that, I decided I was going to start Watch Dogs, the first one. I decided I was just going to go play because I I was given the third one and the third one came with a copy of the first one. And then I also bought the second one. I bought the second one because that was on sale. Mm-hmm. So, so you have all three. Yes, I've got all three. So at the moment of playing through the first one, Watch Dogs mm-hmm. is set in Chicago, I believe. And I don't actually know what time period it is. I don't know if it's actually supposed to be set in current day. Well, the current day would be, what, about 2014 for that game? Because that's when yeah. it was released. It so, might be. I think it's supposed to be around that, maybe a few years ahead. Yeah. I don't think it's supposed to be entirely contemporaneous, but I think it's not that far off. So the whole aspect of the game is that you play as a hacker guy by a guy called Andrew and Pierce. So basically that something's happened and now he's hunting people down. But mm-hmm. while that's going on, you've also got the kind of the basic mechanics of the game where you are able to hack other people. So by the use of people. their Well, pe- it said hack people. It's not really hacking people, it's hacking their devices. Right, okay. But they use the phrase hack people, I think, quite a lot. No, that's 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 fine. I'm just making sure that that's the difference because it not everybody's obviously if you're playing the game. If you're playing the game, it'll obviously be contextual. Hack that person. And then you go to do it, and it's clear you're hacking their phone, not their brain. Yeah. But you know, we don't have that, so and I'm I just wanted to double check because mm. there are games where you can hack people. Yeah. So he's on a mission to try and hunt some people down, some other some fellow hackers. So you are what kind able. Of things are you doing it? Just sorry, about... you were just about. To I say was that. just about to say. I'm so sorry. Thank you. <laughs> My goodness. So impatient you are. All right, Yoda. So you have the option to play the main campaign or you could play like loads of side quests, which I think is really fun because I don't know how many hours the main campaign is and I'm actually quite enjoying it. So I'm trying to draw it out for as long as I can. Mm-hmm. You like us to say, you're able to either play the main campaign or you're able to do side quests. The side quests can really be anything. You, it could be from stopping crimes happening to delivering cars and things like this. It does kind of like remind me a little bit of GTA, but sometimes you are having to outrun the, the police officers, which is actually very difficult because you're able to hide a lot more easily in GTA than you are in this game. Really? Yes. That's interesting because most people, I would say that GTA 5 is the hardest GTA game to hide in. They just seem to pull out in front of you all the time. I mean, it's easier for me now, but when I started playing GTA 5, I found it really hard to lose the Copperinos. Oh, and this one, it's virtually impossible. Oof. It is really, really difficult. But maybe I just need to play it a little bit more to actually get used to it. Mm-hmm. But it keeps saying, oh, I need to go down side alley, you know, like, side, like shortcuts side alleys so that you know people don't spot me they spot you they don't have i don't understand how they could even under guessed where you were but all of a sudden they're in front of you and it's very very difficult so that's part of the that is one aspect of the game is if you do side quests sometimes you have to do things like this so your character has a, a mobile phone or a cell phone um and with that they are able to hack into other people's phones so they're able to take money from them so that's how you basically earn some money as you can steal from people. I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but I do that. And you're also able to hack into things like the lights, the traffic lights, uh, roadblocks, all this kind of stuff. So that is one way that you can actually lose the, the police officers is that you can change the lights to have them crash into other cars or to, to crash into themselves. You have to be very careful because if you accidentally kill people or injure people, you're population uh, population your popularity rating goes down because you're a vigilante that that's what i'm guessing i'm still not entirely sure about that i don't understand how he's a vigilante i've not really understood that part part of the story yet but i don't know if that's part of the main campaign i don't know just, just you just, it's just something yeah you need to keep paying attention to it but i did have a question there about something you said yeah are there bridges in the game yes you are able to hack the bridges and so you can raise and lower the bridges Yes. Nice. Yes. Raise a bridge as you're approaching it and just drive up mm. and shoot off. But also I think part of the game is is that you have to kind of like unlock not so much locations but the ability to use your device in those locations. So there's a network. I think right. it's called so, CTOS or something like this. Right. So basically can I just 
are you going to what you might call a tower and climbing that tower and then what you might say synchronising when you were at the top of that no, tower? No, you have to... It's not, it's not so much towers, but something like it, yeah. You have to you access panels. You climb to the panels. top of something and then synchronise. Yes. Okay. And then to get the entire location, you have to go to like a little part, like lots of security guards, and you have mm. to kind of take them out. And that, that it's a bit like Hitman with that respect. You have to you can either go quietly and take out the security guards, or you can just go in guns blazing. I'd say that sounds a lot more like Assassin's Creed. I've not played Assassin's Creed, so no, I can't. But I know that, but I'm I'm just telling you because um, what you described of climbing towers and synchronizing, it's it's the Ubisoft effect, and they basically get it from Assassin's Creed. Right. Well, yeah, this is a Ubisoft game. Yeah, that's the point. Assassin's Creed is also a Ubisoft game. Yeah, but it's. I, I, I am enjoying it. I'm sort of still getting used to all the gameplay mechanics. I'm still not entirely sure about the, the skill leveling up, leveling up system. I'm kind of just going along with it. I don't really know if I'm utilizing it properly. I also don't think I'm crafting as I'm supposed to. Like guns and things like this. I don't think I'm doing that right. I don't think I'm buying the right ones. Right, okay. Well, that's just time. You'll just learn that as you go. But there's a crafting mechanic in the game. Mm. But, but like I say, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I've I've played probably about ten hours worth now. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I and and I think it's ten hours, not progression. Ten hours. Yeah, yeah, just me playing, playing, playing it, yeah. it. Yeah, and failing. Fine. Like the last mission I had to do, it was trying to sync up the, the last big tower so I can actually access all the network. And oh my, that took forever because I kept getting spotted or um, they kept calling back up and like security guards like sometimes some of them have the ability to call in reinforcements and if that happens it's basically restart mission because it just takes forever i, I just die so there's no point but it it's it, it's funny as well because sometimes you can literally just knock a person out in the same environment as all these security guards but because it's like they're looking the other way they don't see anything they can't even hear like this, the the people are like making gurgly noises and obviously like passing out, but because they're looking the other way, you can't. It's like totally yeah, it's oblivious. A, it's a common stealth thing where they try to give you some leeway with the fact that they want it to feel realistic, but they don't want it to be so realistic that it's oppressive. Yeah. Because you are experiencing this world via the TV and the console controller. You're not really in it. Yeah. So that all that human innate awareness thing that you would have as a human being to be able to tell somebody's looking at you when you can't see it and all that sort of just jazz is gone, you know? Yeah. Like being able to know that a door's open because you can feel a draft. That's all gone. So they have to give you some leeway, otherwise it would be impossible. That's why I don't like games when they just make it totally realistic because when they do that, they've forgotten that it can ever be realistic as long as you can't smell what's happening yeah and so um yeah that that always bothers me but if that that, that, it can be funny but it's it makes the game a bit more fun and it can be funny because you can be standing there some games let you like choke the person you've got to press a certain button to choke them or to knock them out and if you don't it just holds them in this position and you can just stand there just like choking this guy or or like uh you know uh, tying him up or whatever it is right behind the other guy who's just facing the other way and you're like i've been here for like 10 minutes how have you not noticed this yet (laughs) like i'm tying him up and kicking him how can you how can you not hear this well in this one you can like open gates and things like this you can hack the gate system or you can make things explode but a really a really fun cool feature is that you can hack into security cameras, and you can keep That's going, good. and then you can use the security cameras to trigger an explosion, or anything else. Right. Okay. So it's like a, use... a system of hacking. It's like a trail. Yeah. Can you use the cameras just to pay attention to what patrols the guards yeah. are on, so you can get up behind them? Yes and no. You can because you can't do the same thing. You can't do it at both times. No, so no, my point look- is, though, if, if you hide, but you can't see, say if you hide in a bunch of boxes or whatever, yeah. a cupboard, but you can't see the, the guy, um, you can't see the guy, but you know he's there. You could use a camera to see when he turns around and then sneak out behind him. You can, but you, all, you always have to have access, you actually have to be able to see a camera of some description. So if you can't see a camera, you can't do it. 
Right. So if if it was like a double corner, like a U shape. Yes. You could see the camera on the wall, looking down the the alley next yeah. to yours. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, I mean, I mean, saying... like you have you have to be able to see the first camera. No, no, I get that. So you could even connect up different cameras. Is yes, that what you're saying? that's what you. Right, so again, that would allow you to be close enough to to somebody where you wouldn't want to poke around the corner in case they were looking straight at. I think I've worked out. That sounds quite quiet, doesn't it? Yes. That's what it is. I'm talking to the right. Okay, I'll try and sit here. Um, because where you could say, all right, I can see that guy over there. What I'll do is I'll. Uh, well, I can't see the. I know he's there. I'll pull back round. Ping, 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 because you don't want to poke your head around. Yeah. And then find the guy staring straight at you, and then that's that. Yeah. But can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. You said you hadn't played Assassin's Creed, but have you played Hitman? I have. I've played a little bit of Hitman because I got a old copy of, I think I got a 360 copy, which I was able to play on my Xbox, but it didn't work right. But I have, but it, certain mechanics were, I was able to play. Other aspects of it, I wasn't able to play. That shouldn't be the case. I think you're talking about absolution, and you should have been able to do everything. Oh, are you talking about maybe some of the online stuff wasn't there? No, like um, I wasn't able to access medicine cabinets and things like this. Are you able to access medicine cabinets? Apparently you were, but I couldn't do it. But I have since bought a Xbox One copy, like a digital copy. Because I think it was on sale or something like this, so I bought of that. Of what? At Hitman. Which one? I don't know. Is it just called Hitman? I think it's just called Hitman. Right, well, that's the new ones they made, not the older ones. Well, I have bought those. That's fine. Um, I've not played the only, them yet. The only one I would recommend, really... I mean, I like Absolution, but I can see why other people don't. But, but you'd have to play... If, you're going, if you get into Hitman, you have to play Blood Money. Okay. You just have to. It's it's like in in gaming terms, it's a great balance of stealth and fun. So that is what I have been playing, and I'm enjoying Watch Dogs, mm -hmm. and I will continue to play Watch Dogs. Good. What have you been doing? Well, I'm doing uni work at the minute, so I actually haven't been playing anything. That's okay. Um, I forgive you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, it's sort of like you know, it's just the same as before when you were busy with. Yeah. College and uni, you were you weren't able to play anything, so that's just this, we've managed to swap that around <coughs> quite comfortably. So for the next over a month, uh, I'm probably not going to be talking very much about okay. things I've played because I won't have played very much. That is totally acceptable. Uh, I would now use this pen as a pipe. So do you just want to move on to the stories that you sent me to read? I was pretending to be Gandalf um, blowing a ship smoke. Ship. Oh yes, but I, I don't. I I don't have a CGI bedroom. <laughs> so uh, you don't have a CGI life. Yeah, so I, I had to just pretend, and it just looks like I'm trying to eat a hamburger backwards. <laughs> Looks like you were trying to do a Jim Carrey impression of eating a hamward back hamward backwards a hamward backwards a hamburger backwards. Yes. You wanted to move on to the stories? We shall I, do so. I do. Go ahead. So the first story we have for you guys is regarding Activision Blizzard. Now, it could have been a number of things we could have talked about, but we decided to talk about the latest set of accusations against Activision Blizzard because I think that they've had many, many horrific things been accused of been going on at the company. And I don't really know the full scale of things people have been accused of, but the one that we were going to be talking about was the working conditions and pay because that's the one that we know the most about because we don't yeah. want to be like throwing out misinformation or anything like this about mm -hmm. other things. So this is what we're going to be talking about. So basically it has come to light that many individuals working at Activision have been working extortionate hours, 50 to 70 hours for some of them a week. And... Basically, there's been some question as to, like, the quality of pay, the quality of working conditions. Basically, what one of them was saying that about seven years ago, the QA staff took a 7% pay cut. And I think with only within the last year, it's reached back to what it used to be. Now, Wait, Can I just ask, just a quick, just to double check, 7% pay cut, where did you $7 see 7%? $7 pay cut. 
Right, sorry, I, I heard sorry, you saying it. My, my apologies, I meant $7. Yeah, they took a, a per hour, not per year. Yeah. Sorry. That's, just... that's what I meant. They, they took a $7 pay cut about seven years ago. Mm, you need, sorry, just to $7 per what? Per hour. Right. Pay cut about seven years ago, and it's only recently just gone up to what it actually was before that. Uh-huh. So if you think most companies... When you work there for a certain number of time, your pay increases per year by percentage. Well, At least it does over here. Yes. You see, the difference is in America, you're supposed to negotiate your salary. Whereas over here, you have a much more standard practices regarding salary because of uh, quality laws and stuff like that. Yeah. So it is a different system that we might misinterpret, but we'll do our best. Yeah. So like I said, not only were these staff severely under... Well, they were underpaid, basically. To say it well they agreed i don't know if they were actually agreed to it i think they must have done to a seven dollar pay cut but now they were working 50 to 70 hours per week which is quite frankly i believe i know in this country illegal i don't really know about the, the it's not illegal and... sorry just to clarify you can choose to do it the law prevents you from being forced to do it right so the law prevents somebody from being forced to work over 40 hours or being fired. In America, they essentially have no extra c- contractual uh, protections. So if it's not in your contract that you're protected from being fired, you can be fired for any reason. Yeah. Because, I mean, an employee has actually spoken about it over just how difficult it is to to be able to really take care of yourself on that kind of income that they are experiencing. Mm-hmm. Because I know that somebody had to, somebody, another employee was talking about the fact that they had to live with three other people just so they didn't go hungry, which is a really sad thing because they cannot support themselves. They cannot actively live by themselves in a, in a flat, an apartment, or own a house by themselves because their pay isn't high enough. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I saw something online the other day, if I can interject. Yeah about a man who bought his house here in the 60s yeah i think it was for a th- he was a fireman he was earning a thousand pounds a year and his he had a needed a 500 pound deposit and he needed a uh, to pay a three thousand pound mortgage so his house was worth three and a half grand yeah for that to be the equivalent now with the average house price not at three and a half thousand, but at six hundred thousand. So if the average house price in London where he is is six hundred thousand, I needed to add that in. The average house price in the UK is not six hundred thousand. I was gonna say it was in London. <laughs> right. So the six hundred thousand would be um it was something ridiculous like they would need a deposit of fifty thousand pounds and they would need to be earning two hundred grand a year for it to be equivalent. The average income in Scotland, it's not directly comparable because this is a house price in London, but the average earnings in Scotland uh, as of 2015, I think, was £27,000 a year. Yeah. So but I know London is London, but he was in London when he make, bought his house and when he was a fireman. If you're trying to tell me that your average fireman in London is earning £200,000 a year, I don't believe you. Yeah. Because it's, I can look it up. They're publicly paid. I can look it up. I, I was looking... So, so, yeah. Sorry. I was just going to say it goes to the fact that a lot of people who from an older generation you know, say, why are you job hopping? Why are you doing this? Why are you, you, know, why are you blah, 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 blah. And it's because those jobs where you could walk into them at 20, work till you were 60 and then retire and you've bought your house don't exist anymore. No. It's the like, houses are actually too much for most people to buy. I was looking... ludicrous. I was lo- actually looking at some houses... Not for myself, but there's a web. There's like a website you can go on and look at houses, but it also can tell you like the uti- what the average utility bills are going to be depending on who you go with, uh, what the average mortgage is in that area, but also how much that house, if you put deposit down, how much it would be. And there was one, and I think it was something. The house price was about two hundred forty thousand, or something, right. roughly around that, between that and two seventy, I think it was. £29,000 deposit. Right. That's more than a probationary teacher gets paid in a year. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's crazy. To put that into context, that guy, with his story, his house was worth three and a half times his yearly wage, which means the average house 
should be somewhere in the region of about eighty five thousand pounds. Eighty to eighty five thousand. Yeah, eighty five. I mean that's what they talk the about the fact that house, yeah. our generation's gonna be the renter generation and it's gonna be the generation after us that will actually get houses. We will never get houses. I actually tried to take out a house purchasing ISA to try and secure a really good deposit rate where the government helps you. Yeah. But they shut down that ISA about six months after I took it out. So even though I took it out, they're refusing to honour it. So I don't get any help with a deposit if I ever try and buy a house with that ISA. I did the same thing and I mine's still... Oh, mine's got cancelled. They didn't even give me an option. It's not like they said you need to put money in to keep it. They said that's done. I've still been paying into it. Well, I need to speak to somebody then, but I got told that my ISA was removed because of the fact that um, they've done away with that assistance program. So that's ridiculous because yeah. they, my, this this we'll have this conversation off a, off a, the off a air or whatever. But I'm going to talk to you about that. So anyway, back to the story. Yeah, but the the point is, is that. This might sound weird for certain people to hear, especially if anybody's listening from an older generation. But you know, they might say, you know, like I think um, I might be. I'm, I think I'm roughly saying what you were going to move on to, and if I'm not, I apologise. But they're saying that pay is around fourteen dollars an hour, and other than others said it varies from fifteen to seventeen. That probably sounds okay for fifty years ago, yeah, or thirty years ago, but for nowadays, you can't. That's not enough to survive. And um, it's nothing to do with globalisation. It's to do with inflation not matching wage increases. Because as soon as the wages go up, everything else goes up. Yeah, so they can't catch. Yeah. It's the same over here. Genuinely, I remember when the... when the, What was it? The average, weight, the average income or whatever it was went up. And literally the day after, everything was about 20 pence more. Yeah. I'm just looking up some facts for comparison... Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to continue with the story, if that's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I would say that also um, an employee was saying that they also don't get health care or dental, which is incredibly important if you work in the US, as many people know, that you, if you don't have health care oh, insurance. jeez. No even getting any... Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot we live in a bountiful land of milk and honey compared yeah. to these people. I know. It was... It's really difficult... When you hear things like this, because a lot of people are choosing between healthcare and being able to feed their families. I've heard a lot of stories about that, and that is a horrific thing. But most companies have got a base, used to anyway, have especially in the US, have basic healthcare and also dental. Dental used to be the thing that they would give you and always stinge on the healthcare. But it seems like they don't even get either. And they've said that... Um, also, employees have come out and said that many people need to be need for their mental health to take time off, but they can't afford to do it because they can't lose the money. Because a lot of states, because um, in the UK, I believe each devil, they, we've got the power of devolution. So that means that each country within the UK is able to make their own laws about certain things. But I think throughout all the UK, we have statutary, stat, stat, statutory time off, paid time off. And also paid sick leave. I believe you've got... I don't know if every time you can do that or if it's a certain number you have, like certain days or things like this. Uh, well, I can tell you from uh, experience that paid sick leave, uh, you usually have to earn paid sick leave. Yes, but I'm talking... been working for a certain amount of time and it's yeah. nowhere near as good as it used to be. Yeah. It's like if you worked for 20 years, you get five days or something. It's just it's become... Uh, that has become nowhere near as good as it should be. Yeah. But they they can't. But um, in the U.S., it's not a one rule for every state. So certain states can make their own laws over regarding sick pay, work, paid time, mm -hmm. paid time off, all this kind of stuff. But Activision Blizzard have said that they are trying to act. They are actively working to implement paid sick leave with annual allotment um, hours for all employees who work oh, in states no. where it. No, no. Finish that, sorry. Lost my place. You said in states where it's... And then in you states stop. where it's uh, not a law. Right, okay. So basically what you're telling me is they have enacted this in states where it is a law and they are trying to in states where it isn't. There's no, there's no try here. You know exactly how to do it because you're doing it. So yeah. just get it dude. There's no need for you to, to be trying. Just do it. 
that's like that's literally like putting something on a shelf with one hand and saying well we're trying to do it with uh, the other hand but um we don't don't have to so <laughs> yeah i mean it's your company you're able to do it i don't know i don't know maybe i'm incredibly ignorant maybe there are certain rules that they have to abide by if they're in a certain state i don't know I would be surprised if there was a law banning sick pay. I don't know. I don't know enough about state laws in the US. Because the thing about sick pay is that, technically speaking, I doubt a law would come about that, that would ban a company from basically giving its money away. And that would be the attitude of certain people. If, if you genuinely thought that sick pay was unearned and therefore you don't deserve it, you'd have the opinion that you can't tell somebody what to do with their money, therefore you can't ban sick pay. To put it into some level of context, if I may steal, uh, if that's the end of the story. It is. I don't um, know why I said it like that. It is. It, it is. It is the story. Um, it's all I have um, on the story. It's just another really horrific thing that's going on in Activision. Allegedly. So to put, so to put it into context, if I may, the um, uh, didn't share how much they currently make, but they did say they took a seven pound seven dollars per hour pay cut. That translates to five pounds an hour. That's a lot of money. Yes, and just to put it into context, the fourteen dollars is ten pounds, fifteen is nearly eleven, and seventeen is twelve and something in pounds per hour. I think they said the average salary for somebody within that was it the national sa- na- national average salary for QA tester was something like fifty grand a year. Just to put it into context. That's across any company. That's not just with a Activision Blizzard. I'm saying that's like the national salary. It's like over here, like national salary for anything is whatever it is. It doesn't matter the company that you're working for. Interesting. It's difficult for me to get these numbers because for some reason I keep finding the old numbers for teacher pay. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just... Yeah, sorry, where, 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 where is it gone? Uh, 17 was uh twelve twenty six. The Scottish minimum wage is eight thirty six and the living wage is calculated to be nine pounds fifty. You know, so they're not they're not way above that. No. If they're being paid a maximum of twelve for you know, they're not way above that. And that's our living wage. I have no idea what the uh and we don't also we also don't have to pay insurance like health insurance or dental insurance. That's the point. We've the living wage in the United States is, is calculated to be sixteen and a half dollars as of twenty nineteen. So they're being paid less than the living wage. Um, there probably isn't a minimum wage. That's crazy. Yeah, but you're gonna notice if somebody takes five quid. Say if you work an eight hour day and they're taking five quid off you, that's forty quid in a day. That's two hundred quid by the end of the week. If they give you a seven dollar pay cut, it becomes two hundred pounds. That's just terrific. In a week. Which means in a year. I can't do that math. Uh, it's a uh, maths, and it would be eight hundred a month, which would then translate into nine thousand six hundred. That's just pounds. disgusting. Yeah. Shall we move on to another story? Something a bit more uplifting, please. Yeah. So. It's just the fact that the people at the top are being paid like fifty million. I know. It's the same over like, here, though. Like, it's the same in this country. I want you to tell me something, and I really mean this. Fire the CEO of a company, and in a different company, fire all the workers. See which one survives. Next yeah. story. It's just bringing me back to bad memories of last year. <laughs> mm. So, for the last few months, it has been rumoured that Rockstar have been working on a secret project. Is or it? maybe not so much a secret project, that they were basically going to be remastering some old games, some old GTA games. I'm not entirely sure if that was secret or just nobody was talking about it. I don't think many people were talking about it. To be fair, I think quite a lot of go- was going on in the world. Yeah, I think it was unknown as opposed to deliberately kept secret. Yeah, well, apparently, is it uh, Kotaku? Is how you pronounce it? It's got some insiders. Yeah, it's called yeah Kotaku, but I prefer to say Kotaku. I got some insiders, uh, and they have said that G- uh, that um, Rockstar North. I keep wanting to say Rockstar North. Rockstar have got into the stage where in the- they are almost finishing development of three GTA games, some classic mm-hmm. games, and these games are GTA Three, Vice City, and San Andreas. 
Yeah, they're remastering those. Well, Is it remastering well, uh, or... yeah, 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 hold, 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 hold. Consider it held. Thank you. So these games are apparently going to be released on many different platform platforms. Platforms. Pat platforms. Uh, platforms, as platforms. we all know. Platforms. She lives next door to me. Platforms. She's lovely. Platforms. But nothing has been officially confirmed by Rockstar at the moment. So please keep that in mind. Nothing has been officially confirmed. And there have been some conflicting reports on whether it's a remaster or a remake. Mm, yes, that would be my thing because I'm not entirely sure that it's easy for them to just remaster games from that era. Yes. Um, I'm not sure about that. So that's what people are... They don't know if it's going to be a remaster, they don't know if it's going to be a remake, but apparently some insiders have said that these three games are near the end of development. And if they okay. are close to possibly a fall or autumn release this year. Can you put that into... Ooh. I said fall Sources or autumn. Sources confirmed that Rockstar Dundee is leading the charge on developing the remastered games. Interesting, interesting. I did not know there was one in Dundee. I knew there was one in Edinburgh. Oh, wow. Uh, before it, it was called Rockstar Dundee, the studio was Ruffian Games and had worked on Crackdown 2, Crackdown 3 and the development of the Master Chief Collection, which actually works very well now because we still play that. Yes, still play that, it. That I've, works very I've well I've still now. not finished number three. I've still not finished Halo 3. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's a bit of good news. I've played GTA 3. I started to play on the other one I have. What was it? Vice City and San Andreas? I doubt it's San Andreas, but um, if it is like San it Andreas... Was... No, I think it was Vice City. I've got the game yeah. somewhere. I wouldn't bother with 3, but with Vice City and San Andreas, I'd be seriously considered recording those because they're, they're just... I they're want just to play games where you can... 3. Because I played 3. You remember. Okay, you play three and I'll play the other two. The other two are better than three because I've played all of them. I know they are. I hate you sometimes. And those sometimes are all of the times. Indeed. Um, there was three other games that they were making as well, wasn't there? I just saw the ones about GTA. No, they, they were all about GTA, basically. They were releasing a GTA 5 online that was by itself. Uh, they're releasing a remastered GTA 5 for the new console, Series X, Series whatever, uh, uh, PlayStation 5. And I think yeah, it was a remaster of, yeah, of and, and there was the online only, and I, I can't remember the other one. Was it maybe a GT, was it maybe a Red Dead thing? I, don't I can't really that. remember. Pardon? I don't remember. I don't remember reading that. No, they were in a different story that I read a little while ago. Oh, okay. Um, that there were six games in development. Can you uh, just drop your pen? I caught it as it fell. Um, <laughs> I just saw you but, just do a quick shift. Yeah. There was five GTA games, three uh, at least, maybe six, three unknown. And I think these are the three unknown ones. Right. Do you know who actually voices um, Vice City's main character? Mm, no, I don't. Have you heard of Ray Liotta? Yes, I have. The actor. He does the... Yeah. I'm trying to remember who they are, but I, I know the name. He does a lot of gangster movies and stuff like that. He wasn't in The Sopranos, was he? No, but I think he was in... Uh, he wasn't in... He was in... Have you seen the... I can't remember the name now. The one with Joe Pesci. Nope. Mm. What, Blues Brothers? No. That's not him anyway. That's not Joe. I don't think that is Joe Pesci. Is it? Have you seen Who Be Halloween? Is that the one of Adam Good Sandler? Fellas. It's Goodfellas. Uh, yeah, he was in Goodfellas. Um, yeah. It's no. The one with Adam Sandler. Have you not seen it? No. He's in that. He's a. Uh, yeah, he voices the character in that. Oh, okay. I've never um, seen it. Hmm. Played it. Don't... He voices the main character in GTA Vice City. Uh... Um, the only Halloween movies I watch are Nightmare Before Christmas and Halloween Town 1 and possibly Halloween Town 2. Right. Well, just to go back to the gaming, <laughs> what GTA did was it did have really famous people in Vice City and then they sort of started, like even Burt Reynolds is in it at one point, and they slowly moved away yeah. from that. So they had the main character and most of the main characters were voiced by people who weren't famous actors. And then by the time they hit GTA 5, they're basically just hiring people who aren't famous. 
Not who aren't good, just who aren't famous. Oh, that's interesting. Anyway, so that's what we've got to look forward to. Next. The last one. I don't know what it is. Oh, this one's me, isn't it? Yes, so basically the United Kingdom have been making progress, is not the way I would describe it, but movement towards um, certain legislation regarding loot boxes. Um, I think it was, uh, you know, I mean, the advice I think is they need to be banned, but at the minute we've got to the point where it's, they, they're not allowed to be blind anymore or we're pushing towards that. Uh, what does if that I'm mean, being blind? Honest, Sorry? You, uh, you can't see what's in it. Okay, I just want to double check that that is what it was. Um, the issue I've got here is this American news article has more information about UK loot box movement than the UK news. So I don't really, I, this is actually the first I've heard that there's apparently been progress. But apparently these conversations that the, the committees down at Westminster keep having has pushed the Americans. So the Democrats are now moving to try and make loot boxes um, uh, less predatory towards children. They they were discussing things like the ESRB and the um, AADC. Okay. Which is the Age Appropriate Design Code uh, of Practice and uh, the uh, Pan-European Game Information Guidelines, PEGI. So I think you've seen yes. like PEGI 15 or whatever. Um, so these things aren't law. I think that to some degree you're not allowed to sell to somebody who's below the age, but they're not. The law doesn't dictate what the guidelines are. I think. I think the law just dictates that you have to obey them. Okay. Uh, something like that. Some of them are le are legal. Some of them aren't. I think when it comes to the advice, like if it says Peggy fifteen, you're not allowed to sell it to somebody who's under fifteen without a parent being there. So there might be some movement towards. Um, making them less predatory towards children. As far as I'm concerned, this conversation has been lasting the whole time we've been doing this and it's taken too long. Like, why are they not banned yet? I don't understand. They are so predatory and destructive. Why are they still legal? But lawmakers uh, in Chicago, it says here at the end of the story, and this is the downside to this, wanted to ban games such as Grand Theft Auto V due to an increase in carjackings. If GTA 5 led to an increase in carjackings. Would we not have more carjackings in every country that GTA 5 was sold in? It's the same, it's the same as when they uh, blame GTA for um, crime, uh, any kind of crime. That can Mass happen shootings in GTA. and yeah. all that sort of stuff. It's just... You can't take a well-adjusted normal child, give them GTA 5, and they suddenly turn into a criminal. It's not how it works. It's not rap music and Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, wait, they didn't do that thing either. It's just people who don't understand saying, oh, this is bad. And it's a shame that they've managed to conflate one thing which is just made up with the loot box issue, which is real. Even gamers are saying this is real and we need to fix it. Oh, yeah. So it's just so... Like, I know it's probably not the same thing, but I, to a certain degree, as a child, I not so much had a gambling problem. <laughs> but, you know, I didn't know when to say no. I lost a lot of money at a lot of fairgrounds. Ah, right, okay. By... Tambolas, raffles. So the oh this time, this time, this time, this time. I, at one point I was very lucky and then I stopped being lucky. But you know, I, I could easily go through like twenty quid. And that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money, especially back then, because I'm I'm talking about when I was like quite young, so like about ten. Yeah, that's a lot for a ten year old. Yeah, but that's also a lot for back then. That's like the turn of the century. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like two thousand and two or three or something. Yeah. Like that. So, like I, I and this was like a re reoccurring thing, like even like claw machines and things like that. I I didn't know when to say stop, and literally it stopped when I ran out of money. And now I try and stay away from things like this. I use uh in GTA Online, I go to the casino, but I only ever use the chips that you're given. You know, because you can give they give you a thousand chips a day, mm -hmm. free. So mm -hmm. I only ever use that. Or I it's have free money. It's free money. Let's just go. Let's just spend free money. Well, it's Let's not. My, it's not mine. You know. Well, I mean, it is mine. Is it, they it's give it to me. It's useless if you don't use it. Yeah. So you might as well just use that and then leave. Yeah, but I never, I never finish it. And also, you get a free spin of the wheel every day. And sometimes I've, I've won twenty five thousand, uh, like twenty. Yeah, I think it was twenty five thousand chips. So. 
or two thousand five hundred something. It was definitely two. And a, there was definitely a two and a five there. The point is, is that you have learned to keep it a sealed system. Yeah, and it's like the same as if. I mean, obviously, over the last year. Can I just not... interrupt? Yeah. Have you played a game that has blind loot boxes in it? To the best of my knowledge, I haven't. That would be interesting. But I would never use my own money. I just wouldn't. I've learned my lesson because I'm trying to think if there ever was a time when I used... I don't think there ever was a time when I used my own money because roughly when I started getting into mobile games then... But I got to, I was into mobile games before I was into like console gaming. Mm. I was It was already very aware that people were spending... Hundred, like kids were spending hundreds yeah. of pounds of their parents' money. So I knew never to do that. I always knew to read the small print to make sure it wasn't my money I was spending, but like the in-game currency I was spending. Yep. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, I would, I don't use my own money for that. I never would, because I'm like, I, I've gotten to the age now where it's like I could, even if I'm making, like buying anything, I think, do I need this? How much? What? What else could I get for this money? And normally it's groceries. <laughs> groceries are more important. Yeah, it's just you need to find a way to put it into perspective, I suppose, if possible. I mean, I, if, if there's a claw machine there, I'm like, I'm only going to spend X amount of money on it. And that'll be it. I'll walk away. But you have to be rigid with yourself because yeah. you know you'll do more if you aren't. Yeah. Whereas I can say, oh, one more because I will actually just do one more and then stop. Yeah. Mm. So I think, okay. yeah. I was going to say, did we go to an arcade once? But no, it was in a cinema. Do you remember it had like, that small arcade next to it, like within it? Yeah, but it, the, you were... the, none of the machines were working. No, you were... Yeah, I didn't really take into... Yeah, I didn't. I do remember now that you used the machine a couple of times just to get those wee things. Like it was a claw machine or something like that. Oh yeah, it was like the two... Yeah, it was. It was yeah. like the two... It was like the... And I was sitting there, why would flushies. you do that? And then you went back and did it again. And I thought, okay, why... I, what, what, and I think now thinking back I can see what you mean about you being willing to go and do that stuff whereas I think it's it, just, it doesn't hold any appeal to me it's just, I find it fun yeah maybe it's your hunter gatherer maybe you're just trying to accumulate as many items as possible oh it is really that's why women like shopping I is actually I, I recently bought, <laughs> you say that I recently bought more clothes yeah I see I don't even wear clothes let alone buy them you do wear clothes. I don't wear anywhere near as many clothes as most other people do because I'm stuck in the house all the I've time. I've got so many outfits and I wear pretty much the exact same thing every single day because every single day I'm either doing artwork or I'm in the garden and I don't want to get anything you on should my come, nice clothes. You should come on the next podcast wearing like a fancy dress and a big hat, like a really big hat. I don't have a really big hat. I've got like a one with Why like netting over. Why are you buying clothes and you don't have a really big hat? Oh, I've got my sun hat. I've got the hat that you said I look like George Michael in. Do you remember that? Yes. I thought I looked yes. really cool, and then you ca- you saw me and like, why do you look like George Michael? And my confidence just dropped. Come on, I didn't say it like, why do you look like George Michael? I said, you look like George Michael. Drop. <laughs> was that a dead drop or something like that? They call no, it? that's my confidence just going. <laughs> Death drop. Death drop. That's what they call it. Dance move. Anyway, I believe that is all the stories we have for you today. Yes. So all that's left to do is to wrap this lovely gift of a podcast up. <laughs> to wrap. To wrap. I'm not going to. I don't choose to humiliate myself. Do you know what I found out the other day that was interesting? What? Lots of video game music has now become non-copyrighted. Really? Mm-hmm. You need to send me that because I don't know anything about that. Uh, no, no, not not because of like a legal technicality, but because um, either it wasn't copyrighted to begin with, or copyrighted soundtracks only last for so long. Mm, interesting, interesting, interesting. Anyway, that's for another day. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys so much for listening. Mm-hmm. If you want to like the video, subscribe to the channel. That'd be fantastic. You can hit the share button. You can also hit the notification button for when we upload. Leave a comment down below. What do you guys think of the stories? Is there anything you would like us to discuss? Any games you'd like us to discuss? Tommy is the gatekeeper of all the comments and all the emails. You could email us at overshadow.shadowcast at gmail.com. There's a challenge for you. All the information about that is going to be left in the description box down below. I may respond. I may even read them. (laughs) (laughs) Are you actually checking on them? Uh, yeah, I get notifications anytime anybody says anything. 
It's not happened in a long time, has it? Nothing that we can um, discuss. Oh, so we have actually been getting emails, but I don't know anything about them. Oh, no, not emails. No, no, just comments. And they're um, they're not saying anything interesting. I don't see the comments. I, I need to... Uh, there's something going on. There's a chance I might be removing some of them because they're like bot comments. Oh, right. Yes. I remember seeing a couple of those. I was like, oh, we got a call. Oh. I think it's just to do with the YouTube algorithm and the fact that I sound really boring um, is that not many people are listening, so nobody's leaving any comments. But um, if we make more videos in a week, and we will do when we can... Because we were going to start years. doing... Yes, I know, but we were going to start doing the videos and then my uni work went skew iffy, so now I have to do that instead. But um, at the end of that, I have a long time of doing nothing. And I will be thrown amidst into my HNC. Yeah, because remember, since we started this, I've had teacher training and then probation year. We've just been going crazy for the last two yeah. years. Whereas I actually I mean, do we've... have a reduction in my amount of work once I've finished my uni work for a substantial length of time. So I am able to do that then. It was always a plan if it were, if it was available to do, but we never had the time, but now we do. Yes. Well, we will do soon. Yes. And so the YouTube algorithm will start to like us more and should bump us up a bit. Hopefully. But you know how else we can be bumped up? By sharing the video. Liking it. Subscribing. Sounds like a, this sounds like a really... This honestly sounds like some sort of smash poetry Disney song. <laughs> Subscribing. <I've> got... <laughs> sharing. Liking. It's the bell. The oh. bell. The okay. Bell. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.